Welcome to my first video in Star Trek Online series that I'm thinking of doing here. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to kind of just wing this and we're just going to see how this goes. Um, this first video is going to be talking a little bit about what kind of videos I'll be doing later. So let's kind of the introduction video let's get on with it three types of builds that you will generally see on this uh panel the first one is, is your free to play uh build um i'm gonna go more into what makes a free to play build versus a budget build um uh, budget builds are gonna be the predominant ones that i think you'll see on this channel uh, the min-max builds, probably not as much. Um, I will definitely do some here and there. But, okay, so let's talk a little bit about min-max. Min-max builds are meant to push numbers. They're meant to be played with a group of people to reach the leaderboard status of DPS. Um, I'm not one of those people. I do not chase numbers or leaderboard status. I, I, I like to have fun. And I don't find chasing numbers fun. Now, I do like doing like very powerful builds. Don't get me wrong. But there are other creators out there that probably do a better by far. Um, so I would definitely take a look out there, see a lot of better builds for the mid stuff. I may do one or two here, but I would suggest checking out Casual. Um, his min max builds are, um, they're starting to get out, not casuals, but, uh, augmented games has a bunch of older videos out there. They are starting to get a little bit out of date. But he definitely has some very good min max builds too. Um, thankfully, yo, they don't put out a lot of um, new meta stuff all the time. So most of those min max builds that are a little bit out of date only need a slight tweaking and right back into date. So let's talk about the free to play game. So. I'm setting rules for my free-to-play um, builds. No event ship. I do not consider event ships, budget, free-to-play, anything like that. Um, yes, if you get those ships during those events, great. But, say you come back after a couple years from playing, and you missed like three event ships. Well, now those aren't budget ships anymore. They aren't free to play ships anymore. Those are maybe they're in the mud, and they're gonna cost a pretty penny. Uh, so I will just straight up do no event ships or items in the video. Uh, no mud market item. Now, personally, I buy a lot of stuff out of the mud market. I, I do for sales. I never buy anything full price. Don't don't buy anything out of the mud market at full ridiculous but i enjoy the months market but for the free to play stuff no we'll we'll, we'll stay no we'll, we'll stay off the months market um for free to play one c store ship is locked now this will not include the ship for the video so if i'm doing like the arbiter or the, the P6 battle cruiser. The ship itself is not included in the 1C store um, ship allowed. So what this will allow me to do is do the free-to-play videos on some C store ships, and still have access to either C store rep or C store console, um, but only one. Um, I figure most free-to-play players. Have a couple of teeth. Guarantee you, most free to play 
players are not running around in a team. Um, there's plenty of ways to get these store ships. Now, I definitely understand that most free-to-play players do not have all the sea store ships, or even a whole bunch of them. But there's definitely ways to get, you know, E6 coupon. Either sometimes they, they give one away a year. The yearly event gives you, can get you two sea store ships. Um, sometimes, even as a free-to-play player, maybe you save up your dilithium and you change it over to Zen to buy a sea store ship. Um, it's also possible that you can buy T6 coupons off of the trading channel. They're going for about $425 million right now, so it's a lot of money. But you never know. Maybe you found something that you can sell really easily, or maybe you got real lucky with like some kind of free giveaway and got something good um, and are able to do some sales. Or maybe you're really good with the, the exchange, and even as a free-to-play player, you could easily work the exchange to earn credits. Um, there's obviously other ways to earn credits. For the galaxy, it's a lot, but it's a little bit. Um, Endeavors will give you a, a lot of credits. Um, honestly, duty officers are probably a way to get the lithium and credits. There's a lot of different ways that you can you can gain those resources. So it's not unheard of for free to play players to be able to have a sea store ship or two. Um, elite captain upgrade is allowed, um, mainly because all, almost all my captains are elite captain upgrades. You can you can buy them off the exchange. They're they're not even that. Easy. Um, P6X is allowed. Again, another thing that you can just buy off the exchange. You you do have to work a little bit, save some money, and you know, buy it with credits. Uh, fleet gear is allowed. Um, I highly recommend that anybody who's playing free to play definitely join a fleet. Um, and do your daily missions, do your daily event stuff. Um, all those daily stuff add up. Um, also, lots of choice packs where you can get complete credits, access to the lithium mine. There's just a lot there that you can you can expand upon. So I highly recommend joining a fleet. Uh, there's a couple really great fleets out there that you can join. Okay, so budget builds. Budget builds are going to be a little bit more relaxed. Um, no event ships again. Again, I do not consider event ships and items. Not consider them budget or free to play. I consider them if if using them. Most likely, they're very high up in the min max order. Um, no muds of market items. Again, there's definitely some MUDS market items that are good. The Revolutionary set, for example. If you were ever going to go an EPG build, that set's worth getting. That space set is amazingly good. It's also an event set, but now it's in the MUDS market. But if you missed it, now you have to pay for it. And not the cheapest set. So, again, no MUDS market items. If you're a budget build, you're not free to play. So you're willing to spend a little bit of money. Um, so I'm going to say all the sea store ships are allowed. That does include the legendary ships. Um, I understand that those can be expensive. A budget player may not want to drop that kind of money. Now, a budget player may want to throw a $20 bill here and there for a ship when it's on sale. But 80, 100 bucks, that's a little different. Even though the legendary ships are available, I most likely will not be using the legendary ships traits 
uh, the 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 tier or the the six straight. Um, there are legendary ships that I 100% think people should get. In fact, I, I will name the two that I think are probably the the best ones to get: the Jemadar one and the Romulan bundles. Um, the reason why these two are worth getting and worth paying the price tag on those, the Jemadar one gives you the ability to have surgical strikes up all the time. It's the extender for surgical strikes. It is 100% worth getting. On top of that, by getting that ship, you also get the extender for Go, go For The Kill, which is the ex or Go For The Kill talent, which is the extender for Rapid Fire. You are getting two extended extender traits in in that one ship. On top of that, the legendary Jemadar ship itself is an amazing ship. It is great for normal play and PvP, which I'll not be doing PvP on uh, most likely on the channel. I would highly suggest that you go check out uh, Brett. His stuff is um. Um. So yes, the legendary Jemadar bundle, uh, legendary ship is probably my rank one um with the next being the scimitar um i don't particularly like flying the scimitar but it it's three traits not not the legendary trait but just the fact that that one ship also gives you the three operations traits is more than worth it they're or a budget player the amount of traits you get off of the scimitar is very much worth it um i know it sucks buying ships just for traits but that one's worth it on the side note the scimitar is a very good ship i mean it is a very good ship i just personally hate buying it um and then if you get that bundle you're also, on top of that, getting the Teradax, which is not great, but it's a uh, its legendary trait is and used a lot. But outside of the legendary stuff, I'm just gonna say the sea store that your basic sea store ships are allowed in the budget builds. You will see a lot of sea store stuff. Lockbox traits and consoles are going to be allowed. So. Most of these you can buy off of the exchange. Yes, they will cost a little bit of money. Um, if you are a tactical captain, even in my free-to-play videos, you will probably still see me say to pick up a good day to die. Great. That's it's a very very strong trait if you're a cap uh, tactical captain. Um, it is one of the few traits that I think that I feel is mandatory for a tactical captain. It's not very expensive. We save up the credits for it. And the Boimler effect is the second one that is almost mandatory. That one is a little bit more expensive and will take more time. So that one will definitely be seen in the budget builds. I probably won't use Boimler effect in free to play videos, but I will use a good day to die trait in free videos um just because of my stance of that trait is about as mandatory as they come elite just just like a free-to-play elite captain tx fleet ships are allowed not use any lockbox ships or traits or consoles no item worth more than 50 mil on the exchange with the exception of the effect which is a low buy uh console but you can buy it off of the off of the uh change um but like you're not going to see any like agony omni phasers you know you, you will see agony phasers here and there because they're pretty cheap on the change but like some of those crazy omnis you, we're just going to craft it on uh one low buy ship so I'm assuming if you're a budget player, you are now at that point where you're not picking up sea store ships from your yearly campaign. 
and you're probably going to pick up a low buy. Uh, the low buy is a great option because when you get sales, you can pretty much pick up two ships, which is really good. There are some very good low buy ships that are worth getting. Um, reason The real reason why I have the one low buy ship in here is because the extender for beam overload is on a low buy. Um, that is 100% the first low buy ship I suggest that anybody pick up. You pick it up on the exchange with about 350 million credits. So yes, it will take you quite a while to save up. For or if for some, you know, or if you get the low buy from your yearly, uh, that is one of the ships that I highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, there's a lot of good ships, but the ships that have the extenders are generally mandatory. Um, most of our free-to-play videos will be Canon Scatter Volley videos because Canon uh, Withering Barrage is a, is a trait that you can get off of a, a free ship. Uh, most of our budget builds will be Beam Overload though because we get that one low buy ship which gives us the extender for Beam Overload. Probably won't see any Surgical Strikes or specialization uh, firing modes in these two types of videos because well, unfortunately the extender for surgical strikes is on legendary ship which means it's not very budget so a lot of the ships you're going to see in the free to play and the budget builds are can it, uh, can it scatter volley and beam overload Min max builds, well, everything's a lot. Doesn't matter if it's a you know promo ship, lockbox ship, infinity or otherwise. Doesn't matter if it's an event ship, legendary ship, everything. I do a min max build, I'm gonna be using everything at my disposal. So the goals of the builds. The main goal of these builds will be to go from free to play to budget. With a budget build, you can take on any content in the game. We will not be focusing on the min-max builds, but there will be some here and there. Uh, but the main goal is to get people from that free-to-play to a budget. So, the different types of archetypes in these builds. So we have do, which is direct energy weapons. Like I forgot to close that bracket. Uh, tanks, EPG, Dusai, Torpedo, Science Torpedo, and Hank. So, do builds are going to be the predominant builds you're going to uh, The reason why is because they're cheap and they're common. They're the most common build in STL. So, the pros for a do build are going to be they are cheap to make. You can start, you can do them as a free-to-play player. There's plenty of rewards for missions. There's there's a reputation. There's lots, lots of ways to get the energy weapons in the game. They are powerful. Um, or there's definitely more powerful builds out there. But they are easily one of the most powerful style of plays in the game. They're also fun to play. Um, whether it's cannons or whether it's beams, there, there's there's that theme of of Star Trek. You know, uh, they're fun. They're they're what you see when you watch DS9 and you're watching the Defiant fly through with all the cannons blazing. It's 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 what you expect, and their theme is very much on point. The downside to do builds can get repetitive. You'll see that as we get more and more videos out there, you'll start seeing that a lot of things repeat in the build. There's a very clear this these are the best in slots. They're for free to play. These will be the best in slots for budget. Um so there's not a lot of variety. Do builds. 
that your your biggest change in the build will be your uh, bridge officer seat. So that means they're really the starting point, the end point to STA. Where are you going to start your journey? Not going to be where you end. Most likely, most people will end up still doing. I still play do builds, but a lot of people will end up going to torpedoes or science or just any other type. So let's talk about science. Do Psy, Psytor, PP are builds that need more resources than budget builds will allow. Probably won't see a lot of those builds on account, mainly because they, they don't fit into the budget build or the free-to-play. Don't get me wrong, I think they're all fun, they're all great, but they really don't fit into a person on a budget. So the, these are builds that you would be using during that transition period from budget to main. Tank builds. Tank builds come in two types. Um, threat and debuff. Threat builds are what most people think of when they hear tank, using fire at will to build aggro and do damage. Uh, debuff tanks will need a lot more resources than budget builds are going to allow. Uh, debuff tanks are generally what you will see your min-maxers. They will take a, a nanny tank or a debuff tank in with them. Uh, to allow them to do more damage. Um, but they run a lot of low buy, locked box, that stuff. In. Uh, so they, they will not be in the budget. So, hangar pet builds. Hangar pet builds are builds that will need a lot more resources. So you may see them in the min max. Actually, there's technically a third archetype that you're probably going to see on the channel, which is what I would think as a magic player. Uh, they're, they're builds that will be fun and will have no rules like min max, but they're not meant to be. Seriously. So, I love hanger pet builds, they're expensive. Um, superior area denial. Or otherwise bad is a trade-off of a lockbox ship um, which you can get in the sea store if you buy the 12th anniversary bundle you can get it account unlocked but that's one of the traits that i feel is mandatory for any king or pet build and because it's mandatory it doesn't fall so it's Unfortunately, you won't see a lot of hangar pet builds on here. Now, when a new ship comes out and I do a review, so the other type of videos you will see is initial impressions and reviews of new ships. I may not get every ship, which person, so some reviews may be labeled initial impressions or impressions, which means that I don't own the ship and I'm going to base off of the paper numbers. Um, if you see a actual review, then that is the ship I the game of me in the ship. So uh, what in, um, initial impressions, reviews. I probably won't do a lot of news updates. I would make sure you're following Casual because he he does a lot of news up updates. Ken Zander does a lot. Of... They're generally who I'm going to get my news from, anyways. So I'm just going to end up repeating what they're saying uh, for new stuff. So yeah, it's not what I'm going to be going over. Um, I will go over any impressions of, of ships. I will be going. I will be looking at ships as a casual, not in the min-max effect of it, not in the, uh, you know, how meta is a console. Uh, there's definitely better, better content creators for that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just going to be looking at it from 
basic average Joe. Is this worth my money? What can I do with this? I will opt. So that's generally the goals and the the plan for the channel. If you want to come along on the journey, please hit that subscribe button so that way you get updated when new videos come out. I do not have a video schedule set right now. I will try to put out videos in a consistent manner, but I also work a full-time job and can be an issue during around the holidays. So please bear with me during the holidays. Um, but we will definitely be trying to get some videos out. Uh, my first couple videos are going to be really from a free-to-play aspect, trying to get people, you know, part of our goal is to get people from a free-to-play to a budget. Uh, and there's lots of ways to do that without breaking the bank. There's also a lot of, a lot of things that you can buy that will help you along your journey. So if you want to spend a little bit of cash into the game, definitely increase your time spent and your enjoyment level. And reduce that grind but everybody has a lot of cash to throw out the game so we're definitely going to try to get people into that budget level level and kind of work in that in that budget thank you guys for watching we'll see you next time